Good afternoon, Salisbury, Maryland, and good afternoon, National Folk Festival audience. Uh, it's good to be w here with you. Unfortunately, I'm not able to be with you face to face, but I'm glad to be part of this online celebration of the National Folk Festival and uh, traditional uh, music. Uh, my name is Phil Wiggins, and I'm from Tacoma Park, Maryland. Um, I play the harmonica, and I sing, and I make songs. And you could say that the style of music I play is rooted in the traditional country blues, and particularly a style of music known as the Piedmont or Tidewater style, which is really defined by the technique used on the guitar. But after 35 years sitting next to a Piedmont player, it's gotten into my harmonica, and it's gotten into my blood. So. Um, the, uh, the last time I was at the National, it was here in Salisbury, and on our way there, we stopped at the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad uh, National Historical Park uh, to do a performance and uh, to tour their beautiful s facility there, and it was a great pleasure to be there. And you could say that the songs and stories that I'm going to uh, perform for you this afternoon are an extension of that wonderful visit to, to Salisbury. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with a song that I made. Uh, it's called pa Prayers and Praises. Uh, it's a song that I made to keep fresh in my memory. Uh, the, I guess the main experience that inspired me to want to, to uh, make this music was the, the incredible, powerful uh, spiritual music that I heard uh, coming from my grandmother's church when I was growing up. And I sp when I was growing up, I spent a lot of time in Titusville, Alabama. And I used to walk my grandmother to the church on Wednesday evening for the prayer meeting. And I would wait outside uh, for her to come out. She didn't like walking home in the dark. So that's why I would go and, and uh, wait for her to come out. And I would be hanging outside and I would hear this incredible powerful singing of these elder women. Uh, one woman would sing a line and then the rest of the congregation would respond back. And uh, even though the, the subject matter was uh, sacred, um, the sound to my ear was uh, pure blues. And so here's a little bit of um, Prayers and Praises, which is Green Liberty Baptist Church on Wednesday night with a little bit of Sunday morning snuck in there.
That's a little bit of prayers and praises for you. Um, let's see. I think what I'll do now is a couple of uh, instrumental tunes. Um, I mentioned the Piedmont style. And these tunes, even though they're my own, they're based on that style, the Piedmont style, which kind of, I guess, got under got in my blood from spending over 35 years playing with my uh, longtime partner, uh, John Cephas, who was really probably the main ambassador of, of that style, that Piedmont style of music. Um, the style is pretty much defined by the technique used on the guitar of picking out a syncopated melody line on the treble strings and picking out an alternating bass line uh, at the same time uh, with your thumb. And, uh, but it's a really great, uh, bouncy, great rhythmic style. Uh, and I guess the best way to think of it is that, is that you're using the guitar sort of to, to emulate a piano where your thumb is your left hand and your fingers are your right hand. So anyway, I'm gonna do a couple of songs I'm going to do one that, that John and I used to do a lot called Guitar Rag, and then I'll do a little bit of uh, one I made called uh, Anacostia Two-Step.
All right. That's a little bit of guitar rag. And now I'm going to do a little bit of Anacostia two-step. Now, this is one that I made up slash stole. Uh, originally, I wrote this song. It had uh, words to it. I called it, uh, well, anyway, it had words. I was, I was working at the time in, in uh, the Anacostia neighborhood of Washington, D.C., and it was in the 80s when uh, D.C. was the homicide capital of the country, and uh, the, the lyrics dealt with uh, a lot of the bad uh, things that the, the, the youth were getting into at the time. Uh, uh, you know, the, the PCP and, and all that. And uh, well, so th times got better and I got tired of singing those negative words. And so I turned it into an instrumental uh, dance song, which I named a Anacostia Two-Step. I've had a couple of ethnomusicologist friends of mine say, well, it's not really a, a two-step. But, you know, at, I, I'm National Heritage Award winner. I can call it what I want. <laughs> so here's a little bit of Anacostia two-step. Thank you. That's a little bit of Anacostia two-step for you. All right. I think I'll do a couple of acapella songs for you now. I've had the great fortune uh, since I kind of veered off on this path of uh, making music to have become good friends with some great uh, mentors 
and uh, tradition bears that I've uh, known over the years. Um, I think I'm going to do one right now uh, that um, I, I stole a couple of verses from conversations that I heard from some of, I guess you would call those uh, elders. Um, this one in particular, well, there's one, one verse in particular I'm thinking of in this song. Um, I don't know how many people are familiar with Howard Armstrong or uh, Nat Reese. They're, they were both uh, traveling musicians. Uh, Howard Armstrong uh, played in a string band called Martin Bogan and Armstrong for many years, and before that, he had the Tennessee Chocolate Drops, which was so long ago that they titled the name of the recording that they made for that one, they titled it uh, Before the Blues. And um, so, but I remember being over in uh, Elkins, West Virginia, standing in, outside this beautiful uh, little chapel that they have there on the campus of Davis and Elkins College. And we're standing out there, and I'm listening to Nat Reese and Howard Armstrong talk. And they're talking about this card game that they both happened to, happened to be in uh, together. They were, had been traveling. And they came upon this uh, shack. Uh, there were some other fellows in the shack, and they were playing a card game. And so Howard and uh, and Nat joined in. And Howard, you know, as he's telling the story, he said, "Now, Nat, you you back me up on this because people are going to think I'm lying." So um, he he said, uh, "So tell them what happened." And Nat said, "Well, you know, we were playing cards." And uh, one of the fellows playing cards with us got caught cheating. And someone called him out on that and said, you know, you, you're cheating. And that fellow made the fatal mistake of calling his accuser a liar. And uh, Howard uh, piped in at that point and said, you know, you, back in those days you didn't have much, but one thing that you did have was your good name. And so if you wanted to be guaranteed to have to fight for your life, you call somebody a liar. And this, that's what this gentleman did. He called the, his accuser a liar. The accuser pulled his pistol and shot him right between the eyes. And he fell back in his chair. And they said that as, as the sun started going down and it got too dark for them to see, they stuck a candle in the dead man's mouth and lit it, and that's how they were able to continue uh, playing the game. So, here's a little bit, on that happy note, here's a little bit of a song I call Wolf Tickets. Have you ever seen that old geechy trick of pitching a defective night. Well, while your phone fumbles for it, well, you, you pull your good one and you take his life. Kids these days have made to cut that old caper obsolete. And so I stood there staring at that pistol lying at my feet and selling wolf tickets. When my blood comes to a boil, I'm selling wolf tickets. I'm like a rattlesnake in his court. Well, Brother Armstrong told me of a time when life was so cheap, it was a damn shame. He said they stuck a lit candle in a dead man's mouth so that they could continue their skin game. Well, I'm so glad that game that they call skin went out of style. If you laid them dead cheaters down into end, they'd stretch on for miles and miles selling wolf tickets. He had a 
bullet in his head. He was selling wolf tickets. His blood ran candy apple red. Well, you got your reputation made of trying to go for bad. But that don't make me feel afraid, and it only makes me sad. Cause I wonder what you're scared of, why you walk so hard, why you keep on barking like a little dog in the dark. Selling wolf tickets. What makes you so scared? Selling wolf tickets. Have you got those hellhounds in your head? Selling wolf tickets. When my blood comes to a boil, I'm selling wolf tickets. Well, I'm just like a rattlesnake in his coil selling wolf tickets. He had a bullet in his head. He was selling wolf tickets. His blood ran candy apple red selling wolf tickets. Well, what makes you so scared selling wolf tickets? Have you got those hellhounds in your head? Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to perform for you. It's surprisingly, it's surprising to me how strong a connection you can make with this crazy uh, technology that we're having to deal with. And I'm looking forward very much to when I can perform for you for the national face-to-face. -face. Thank you. <laughs>